In the present video, we're going to start presenting the way to use two-dimensional graphics using the draw approach in WX Maxima. I have prepared a document here where we're going to be producing those graphs. I have indicated here the specification for each graph. And below the, each one of the examples, I have a space here where I'm going to insert the command that was going to produce the graph. We're going to use the draw approach. Actually, we're going to make this a little bit to the right. That's the way it shows up originally. And so we have two-dimensional or three-dimensional graphics. They have, you have to select one of them. You cannot use both of them in the same command. And so we're going to start with two-dimensional graphics. When we click here, it first offered us the option of do an animation or a static plot. We're going to forget about animations right now. We're going to go for static plot and say OK. When we do that, then the command WDraw, WX draw 2 d shows up. Okay. Now, we need to select the next thing. When we click expression, that's for a, uh, an explicit expression. This is for an implicit plot. This is for a parametric plot. So we're going to go for expression. Another possibility is to use points that describe the graph. We're going to deal with those later on. And so we go. let's go for expression first. And we're going to enter this um, function s squared plus 1. And it says the variable is x starting from minus 2 to 2. I'm going to change that to minus 4 to 4 and say OK. Uh, the, it, for some reason, it repeat this. This is what I wanted to, to show you. What you're doing is you're building up on this WX draw menu, uh, introducing the explicit expression, and then the cursor should be around here for the next step. The next step is to determine the diagram title, and let's gonna uh, say the title is called sample graph. You can enter anything you want, sample graph. Say OK, and there's that line that says title sample graph. The next step is to indicate the range of x, and that is obtained when we use when we do axis. And when we do axis, we can enter the title for the, I'm sorry, for the x label, which we say is time, space, seconds, and the range of x goes from minus 6 to 6. We're not going to do a range for y, but we do have a label for y, which is velocity and miles per hour. And we say OK. Then when we do that, our command starts growing up and is interfering with the next line there. So I'm going to put some spaces in there and move the cursor to the right of this parenthesis. I have I'll try this. I'm gonna increase the spaces inside here and then take all this part paste it here. That's the way it should be. And so you start building up this command and then the next we're gonna put the cursor right here. The next step is the grid. And the grid simply says, put your grid in multiples of the tick frequency. That, that would be how often the numbers will show up in X and how often in Y. So let's put it 1, 1, well, that's kind of the default. And so this command that you built here, it's what's going to produce your graph. And I need these faces, so I'm going to delete them. And click somewhere in there and do Shift Enter. Okay, it says um, invalid number of arguments eight. What is happening here is that I have this extra parenthesis there, I believe. Actually, the, the parenthesis should be right here after the comma. Now I produce my graph. So the reason why I made a mistake is because I keep clicking around the, the command. But if you do it in that order, you should be able to figure things out. And for example, the explicit ends 
with the uh, expression explicit and the range of values of x for the plot. Then everything else comes separated with commas. And when I say range here minus 6 to 6, means how much you're going to show in the x-axis, regardless of how many you, how much you calculated in the explicit expression. And so that'll give you your graph. And you can copy that graph, save the image, etc. Or if you double click on it, no, actually if you click right here and it says pop out interactively, you can make a few changes in here. For example, zooming, toggle the grid if you want the grid on or off, um, and a few things like that. So I'm going to close that down here, and that's the graph. I'm going to try a second example, and this this time, in the place we're going to put the command, I'm going to put a lot of spaces and click over here, and we start with a 2D static plot. Say OK. And then, actually, it began over here. So what I'm going to do is going to select that, do Control X, Control V, and put the cursor in between. There you go. And then we go for an implicit plot, which is going to be the expression X times sine of Y plus Y times sine of X. X between minus 10 and 10 and y between minus 10 and 10 also. And then there's an OK button down below here. And then uh, let's see, everything looks fine except that we have this extra parenthesis there. Yeah, well, we're going to continue and see what happens. Uh, we go for the diagram title, implicit plot example, and then we go for the axis, x label, look, let's look, x emitters, y emitters, x range from minus 12 to 12, minus 12, in this case we do change that to minus 12 to 12, and then we go for the grid. And the grid, we're going to use the standard one one. If I do control now, I get a, an error, and that's because of that extra parenthesis that I have right there. I'm going to take it out. Still not, still not working. Oh, I am missing a parenthesis and opening parenthesis here. Okay. So the, the way that this works, when you go clicking on this button, you start building your command. Now, if, if you think of it, you can put this command into a single line. Let me show you how. Except that for easiness of reading it, Maxima puts all that in separate lines. I'm going to... Put it in two lines actually. Okay, so that's what you have. You have uh, the wx draw to the command, then a specification for the graph with values of x and y for an implicit case, a title, a label for x, a label for y, a range for x, range for y, and a grid. That's the basics. There's more, more things that you can add, but that is the command. Oops, that produces these graphics. Let's, uh, let's try the parametric here. And I'm going to open this up and say 2D, OK. We'll go for parametric. And parametric is telling me um, X is four, 4, so you have to type here 4 times sine of t over 2, right arrow, square. The y value is 3 times cos, cosine of t over 3, right arrow, square. Parameter t goes from 0 to 10. Let's change this from 0, 0.0 to 10.0.
and we say OK. All right, so we're going to need spaces in here. We're going to and then we're going to delete these ones over here. Okay, now we put the cursor right here. Then, then we go for the title and labels and so on. So diagram title is parametric plot example. And then it, it gave me my separate, I, I, something went wrong here. These should be here after a comma. There you go. And then we give the cursor right here. And then we go for axis. X label is uh, X, let's say feet. And the X range, well, let's go from minus one to five. Y label is Y in feet from minus one to four. And we say OK. And then we have the grid. And in this case, the grid is 5-5. Five, five. You're going to see why 5-5. Five, five. And then we do Control Enter. And it's giving me trouble. Can I render? Well, let's look at the instructions here. T, Z, T, Title Metric. The, oh. oh, the grid got thrown into the into the title uh, sorry about that the grid should have been this the last command in here grid equal five five now we render our parametric plot example right there the reason for this five five is that where the the numbers are located I divided each one of them into five parts if I had done like one one like I've done before I'm sorry then you only get the, that grid and we're gonna uh, stop at this point because I think it's been gone for too long already and continue with the next, next example in the second video.